So today I want to talk to you about words, the words that you speak. And we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. And I want to share that with you first in the Passion Translation. And it says this, let your words become beautiful gifts. I like that. Let your words become beautiful gifts to encourage others. And I want us today to think about the words that we're speaking, the thoughts that we're thinking, not just um, when we're around others, but in the privacy of our own home. What kind of an atmosphere is being created in our home? Because our words or the words that we put on with music or TV or um, phone are affecting the atmosphere in our home. We know and can sense the presence of God when we're in church. We know and can sense the presence of God when we have a quiet time or when we're worshiping him. But we've all been saved long enough that I want us to take it a little further. And I want us to go for the presence of God to fill our home all the time, to fill our thoughts all the time, to fill our words all the time. I'm not speaking to baby Christians. I am speaking to a mature group of people that have known the Lord for a while. And I can give you examples of where I've done this and I've been good at it. And even times when I haven't done it and I can sense in the spiritual realm, the difference it's made. When I, uh, uh, not too long ago, turned on a movie and it was not rated R. I know not to watch those, but it was rated something. And I don't know if they've come out with new ratings now that in my opinion should have been rated R because there was so much swearing in it. And I kind of kept going for a while. I walked out of the room and when I came back into the bedroom, so this is my home not here, but in Florida. When I walked back into the bedroom, I felt a negative atmosphere. And I'm not saying I, I quote unquote felt a spirit or a demon. I didn't see anything. I just walked in and I kind of went, it felt a little dark. It felt a little bit like, ooh. And I thought, oh, that's bad. And I repented and I prayed over it and prayed for the atmosphere to change. Now I'm sharing this with you because I'm still learning. I'm still progressing in this and I've slipped up and I wanna share this with you because I think we're all mature enough now that God is wanting to encourage us to walk cleaner, to walk more holy. And some of that too is to watch the words we're using with our spouse or our best friend and not to get sloppy with our spouse and not to get sloppy in our own thought life. The Bible says, as a man thinketh within himself, so is he. So your thoughts are just as important as your words. Because if we'll deal with our thoughts, they're not going to come out of our mouth in a negative way. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so now when I put on worship music, and I usually leave that going in my house all the time, it creates a great atmosphere. But this movie that I had on created an atmosphere that was not good. And it, again, it was not even rated R. 
I could just feel it when I walked into the room. So my house, my house feels great everywhere. But now this one room I walked back into and I'm like, oh, that was me. I did that. I allowed that. If somebody is struggling with depression, then it means they're having wrong thoughts. They're not dealing with their thoughts. If there's an atmosphere or a heaviness of darkness, the whole house can be full of light and one room be dark. Because what goes on in that one room? So I commanded whatever was going on to leave and repented and just washed the room clean in the name of Jesus. And then I can walk back in and I don't feel that again. The same thing is going on in our thought life by what we meditate on, by what we think on. What's happening up here? What are we allowing ourselves to think on, to meditate on? So let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 in a couple different translations. In the New American Standard Bible, it says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification. So is what I'm thinking on, is what I'm going to say, is it edifying? According to the need of the moment, that it may give grace to those who hear. So are my words that I'm going to say, are they edifying? Are they going to build up? Are they going to encourage? Are they going to give grace to the ones that are hearing me? Usually we're pretty good about this out in public, but are we doing this at home in private? Let no foul or polluting language. I'm going to read this to you now in the Amplified, the same verse. So Ephesians 4, 29, Amplified. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. Notice it said ever. But only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. Okay, so there, right there, we can ask. I don't want that. Thanks. I don't want that. Okay, so are we speaking words that are going to benefit others? Is it going to help their spiritual progress? Is it a blessing? So again, in the Passion Translation, let your words become beautiful gifts. So we're to be slow to speak. Because when there's many words, transgression is unavoidable. He who restrains his lips is wise. Proverbs 10, 19. And James 1, 19 tells us to be slow to speak. Proverbs 17, 27. He who restrains his words has knowledge. So again, before you speak, especially to those that are your comfort zone, because that's where it seems we get a little sloppier. I want you to ask yourself, are my words going to help the hearer? Am I helping them? Or am I venting? Am I processing out loud? Because what I'm finding is when somebody is venting or they're processing out loud, it's because they didn't take it to God the way that they should have. So let's learn from this. Oh, wow. Huh. This is good. Okay. Okay. This is maturing in Christ. This is a message for mature believers. Not babies, mature believers. We've got to learn to take these things to God and turn them over to him in prayer. I'm going to say it like this. This is going to be crude. You ready? Yeah. So that we don't vomit on others. 
so that we don't create a negative atmosphere in our home or a sloppy atmosphere with our words in our home. Our home should be like heaven on earth. So let's just take the bar and raise it up. Raise up that bar. Because you may be thinking, this is hard, Gigi. I mean, seriously, you're talking about my comfort zone. God never tells us to do something unless it's possible. If he tells us to do it, it's because it is possible. Now, I want you to be doing this too, because I can see some conviction in the room. So while we're doing this, I want you to say, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Okay, I forgive myself. Okay. This does not mean that you can't call someone and ask them to pray with you. You can. We are one body. We're the family of God. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm mainly wanting to deal with your home atmosphere, your quote unquote comfort zone that I believe God wants to improve the atmosphere where you live. So that when you finish work and you walk into your home, you feel the presence of God. Mm -hmm. I want us to get used to living in the presence of God. Now, I'm, I'm going to use myself as an example because there is a scripture that says not to sadden the Holy Spirit, not to grieve the Holy Spirit. I think by me watching that movie, I started to grieve the Holy Spirit. And so if his presence starts to remove, not from me, but from the presence of my room, if his presence starts to remove, it starts to feel darker. Okay, so I did that. I, I repented. There are things we can do that will grieve the Holy Spirit where he'll lift. Or there are things that we can do like worship that will draw the presence of the Holy Spirit in. Not all songs, even if they claim to be Christian, are true worship. A lot of the songs are people singing about themselves or their tests and their trials. And it's not really worship. Worship glorifies God. Worship exalts God and the name of Jesus. So if you just put on a Christian radio station, don't think that you're necessarily creating an atmosphere of worship. There can be a lot of talk. There can be a lot of songs that aren't really necessarily edifying. It's about somebody that hasn't matured in Christ yet, that has a good singing voice, and somehow it got popular enough to get on, TV, on, on the radio, and all they're singing about is all their misery and all their woes and all the suffering they're going through. That doesn't necessarily create an atmosphere of worship. So the Bible says that we worship in spirit and in truth. So that means the words need to be true. Are they scripturally accurate? Are, there, are they lined up with the word of God? And so ask yourself that when you turn on worship music. We're told to tame the tongue and to bless with it. It says we all stumble in many ways. If anyone doesn't stumble, he's a perfect man, or we can say mature man. And he's able to bridle the whole body as well. So why do I want us to work on our tongue? Well, first of all, because God told me in prayer to do this on words. I prayed and I asked, what do you want it on? And this is what he gave me. If we will master our tongue, we'll be able to bridle the whole body as well. we will solidify our maturity in Christ. And it says from the same mouth in James 4, 8 to 10, come both blessing and cursing. 
my brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Sometimes just saying something negative about your brother or sister in Christ, you're speaking curses over them. I know a minister when there were, and these were ministers, when other ministers gathered and they started talking about the ones that weren't there, there was a certain minister that would walk out of the room because he didn't want to be associated with what they were doing. They knew better. And yet they were talking that way anyway. Speaking something negative over your spouse, over a brother or sister is speaking a form of a curse. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I want you to do this, okay? In the name of Jesus, any curses I've spoken, I break the power of them. Any curses I've spoken over my brothers or sisters in Christ. Any curses I've spoken over myself. I break the power of them now in the name of Jesus. I break the power of I will speak blessings over myself. I will speak blessings, speak blessings over my brothers and sisters in Christ. I will use my mouth to bless. If I'm going to curse, it's only going to be sickness. And infirmity. And infirmity. I will use my mouth to glorify God and to speak out blessings. Wise words produce life. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to keep confessing now. But, <laughs> but that's good. It's good. Wise words produce life. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says, what's in the power of the tongue? I wish... It was just only life, but actually it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life. A wise man's heart guides his mouth. Proverbs 16, 23. A wise man's heart guides his mouth. Somebody needs to say this again. So just go ahead and do this under your breath. I forgive myself. I forgive, I forgive myself. myself. The mouth, okay, you don't have to repeat now. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, Proverbs 10, 11. So I want you to ask yourself when you go home today, are my words producing good and creating? Are my words producing the atmosphere that I want in my home? <clears throat> And in my relationships, are my words producing a good atmosphere for uh, the person that I live with? Now, how do we handle this when we have other thoughts going on in our mind? Because we're to guard our thoughts. And Philippians 4, chapter 4, verses 6 to 8 says, be anxious for nothing. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God. This is what we want. Why? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in peace. The Holy Spirit is love. In his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence is fullness of joy. How do we get his presence to remain with us by turning everything over to God in prayer. Everything that's frustrating you, everything that's bothering you, turn it over to God in prayer. And then what happens when you do that? The peace of God shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then he tells us what to think on, what to dwell on, whatever's true, whatever's lovely, if there's anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. I'm going to give you another example. I'm going to give you another negative one on me, okay? I'm sharing this with you because this is something God's really working with me on. 
uh, within the last three weeks, I brought something up because I've been around people that have been listening to the news and talking about the news. And I started talking about it with Brad, um, just whatever, about something the president had done, about how they're doing the voting, about these voting machines, some things that were happening. And I was frustrated. And so I started sharing it with Brad. Now, it is good to deal with important issues. I'm not saying stuff important issues, but I was doing it at a time that was not productive. We weren't really gonna pray about it. Honestly, I was just complaining. What I realized is I was complaining. And Brad looked at me and he goes, do you want me to do that too? He goes, cause I could really jump in and, and get on that bandwagon. And then he started mentioning a couple of things. And I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. I, I, now what he had done is he'd help hold me accountable. He helped me realize I was complaining, even though I didn't realize I was. I was frustrated, but it doesn't do any good to put those words out there unless we're going to do something about it. If I had said, Brad, something's really bothering me. Will you pray with me about this? And we'd, we're going to take it into prayer. That would be different. Then you're being productive and you're dealing with it. You're doing something about it. But all I did was complain. And he stopped me in my tracks. This is why close relationships can be very good and healthy for each other if we'll hold each other accountable. Okay. And I suddenly realized what I was doing. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go down that path. I've heard enough about bioengineered food that's not really, I'm not even sure if it's really food after they make it bioengineered, like Ritz crackers. You know what it says on the box of Ritz crackers, on the box of mayonnaise, on the box of Cheez Its, on the box of some raisin brand. It now says bioengineered. It's not even, some of those are not allowed in some countries. Yet our country is still acting like it's a source of food. Again, I'm just sharing with you something that's bothering me. So now I've got to turn that into prayer, not just complain about it, which I have. In the name of Jesus, I pray that we would wake up over what's happening to our food source, what's happening in our country. I've heard of things that they're going to be trying to put into our food that I'm not comfortable with. So I pray, Father God, that you would raise up a standard against this and that somebody would per be protecting our sources of food, that they would stop messing with um, genetically modifying our food sources and our seeds. Again, We've got to turn it into prayer. Otherwise, it just bothers us and it hangs there. So turn it into prayer. So that's what Philippians 4, 6 through 8 tells us to do. Not to be anxious about it, but to let a request be made known to God. And then to believe that when we pray, he's heard us and he's dealing with it. What does not work is to turn it over to God and then to pick it back up. And so we want to train ourselves once we've prayed about it, we prayed in faith, we believe God heard us, we believe he's dealing with it, and then thank him. So when, it, when you start to get tempted to get frustrated again, and you start thinking on it, and the words are about to come out of your mouth and complain about it again, go, no, I prayed about that, and God's working on it. Thank you, Father, for working on that. Thank you, Father, you're working on it. And don't pick it back up unless there's something new you need to add to your prayer. Trust that God's got it. Psalm 1914 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So that means the words of our mouth and what we're meditating on, whether it's the thoughts in our mind 
or we're meditating on something in our heart, we want it to be pleasing to God. We have the goal to create an atmosphere in our homes that will not grieve the Holy Spirit, but he will want to dwell there in his presence with us. You have a guardian angel. I've heard that when we get to heaven, our guardian angels will talk to us and will have some questions for us. <laughs> because when you listen to something or you do something, you're taking them into it with you. Now we know that about God, but let's think about that with the angels that are assigned to take care of you, to protect you. Whatever you're doing is the atmosphere you're also creating for your guardian angel. Whatever you're doing is going to affect the atmosphere that you live in. So I want you to be mindful of your words and especially women, if you don't mind me saying it, I think I can say that because I am a woman. And just in studies, they know that women use more words than men on a daily basis. And I have found that sometimes I process out loud and I'm now checking myself to ask, am I saying this for Brad's benefit or is this for my benefit. And if it's my benefit, because I'm thinking out loud with my mouth, everything that's going on up here is now coming out my mouth. Is it edifying to breath? And if it's not, it means, honestly, I'm processing with the wrong person. It means I've got to take that to God because there's something going on there that really needs to be to God in prayer where I get direction and light and truth from God and then give my husband a break from all the woman words, <laughs> more woman words and more women words and more women words, you know? Well, plus, if you really want them to hear you, I've noticed that if you use too many words, they're checked out half the time and they don't really hear you anyway. And so this is true statement. So. You know, nah, 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 when I go like, nah, 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 right? Huh? Huh? Okay. If you really want them to listen to you, you have to be more concise with your words. So I've learned, I'm in the process of learning. Now I've been married, what, 35, 36 years, long time. Okay. And I'm still dealing with this. I've now learned what's the nugget that I actually need to say here. What's, and actually, what's the information that I need to give to him? Because the rest I'm processing. So I've started to process more internally out of respect to him so that my words are more edifying to him. And I've learned to start taking it to God and deal with God and pray it out. And once I pray it out, then it doesn't weigh on me as a frustration and it's not bothering me. And I've processed it so much that I'm now not cycling in it, saying it over and over and over. When people call me for prayer and I pray for them, I can tell whether or not it was effective by the words they say right after that. Because if they go straight back into the problem, after we've prayed a prayer of agreement, then I know they weren't in faith and it didn't register. And they're going to go straight back to cycling over the same thing again. Okay. So now if I can get them and we pray the prayer of agreement and they genuinely turned it over to God, then they're not going to cycle over the same thing. See, what happens is when people turn it over to God, if they pick it back up, then they didn't really leave it with God. 
We want to leave it with God. We want to leave it with God. So let's go back and look at the scripture I started with. Let your words become beautiful gifts to encourage others. Now, these are, these are my words. You ready for this? Based off of the, the Passion Translation. Let your thoughts become beautiful gifts to yourself. Let your thought life be a beautiful place for you to dwell. I want you to imagine and to see that your mind is full of beautiful gifts that you're thinking about yourself and about your future, that you're thinking things that are lovely and beautiful. And I even want you to see the wrapping paper and the bows on these beautiful gifts mm -hmm. so that you're thinking well of yourself, that your thoughts are gifts to yourself. And your thoughts are gifts to others. And then you verbalize them. And your words become precious, precious gifts to the people that you live with. Edify them. Love them with your words. Build them up. Strengthen them. Encourage them. Do not vent your frustration on them. Take it to God. And ask yourself before you're going to speak, am I doing this for myself and my benefit or is what I'm going to say for their benefit? Because if you're saying it for your benefit because you're processing out loud, okay, this is going to sound firm. You ready for this though? It's selfish. You just need to realize that. It's selfish. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for you. The words you're speaking are for you, not for them. Now, husband and wife relationships, there's grace. Sometimes there's things you need to work out together. There are things you need to communicate about. I'm talking about a daily habit pattern. What is the daily habit pattern you're creating in your home? Is it a place that thrills the Holy Spirit? Is it a place where you've created words as beautiful gifts? Is it a place of worship or is it a place where you're venting the news, the frustration over the news and everything that's going on in the world? So ask yourself, how am I processing? And turn it over to God and let God help you. Don't carry anxiety. And this is something else I'm really sensitive to now. I can even pick it up through text messages. I can tell when someone's anxious and they may try to deny it, but I feel it and then I have to pray it off after. Do not carry anxiety. Turn it over to God. Because anxiety is not an atmosphere that the Holy Spirit wants to dwell in. Don't carry anxiety. Identify anxiety and get rid of it. Get rid of it. If you're carrying anxiety, it means you haven't really turned it over to God. Oh, no, no, I'm just being responsible. No, you're in fear and you're carrying anxiety. So get rid of the anxiety. Rebuke the fear. Get your heart in a place of peace. You may need to meditate on some scripture to do that. And then release it to God and believe he's got it for you. Yes? What are we talking about today? We're talking about how to be a mature man and woman. How to master our words. Because when we can master our words, we can master the whole body as well. When we master our words... We're going to create an atmosphere that is pleasing to God where the Holy Spirit will want to dwell.
we've been walking with God long enough that this needs to be the bar now for us. We can do this. We can create an atmosphere of peace and love and joy because in his presence is fullness of joy. We want the presence of God at all times in our home. Okay, I don't know who's on today. I can't see everybody. This includes no yelling at your spouse, no yelling in the household. If you've gotten to the point of yelling, it means you've already gotten angry. You're not dealing with it appropriately. You waited too long. And you need to have a very quiet sit down talk. If it gets to the point of yelling or name calling, you've waited too long. Deal with issues before they get to that point. Okay. <laughs> Do not allow anger at your spouse or bitterness towards your spouse because it's bad for you, it's bad for your health, and it's bad for your relationship. So you need to deal with these things before they go to that point. Okay, and somebody has some issues with their children. Make sure you're not carrying that in your heart. Process that out with God. Forgive them. And pray the desired result. Instead of allowing frustration to uh, uh, fester in your heart. Okay, this goes for roommates too. So I'm talking not just about married couples, but roommates. Be anxious for nothing. Turn your requests over to God and the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Whatever's true, whatever's lovely, whatever's worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing in God's sight. So now I'm going to pray over us. So Father God, we thank you for the word of God that was written for our benefit. We thank you that you continue to um, discipline those that you love and we're your children. Therefore, you do discipline us. And we know you love us when you do that because you're helping us to mature. You're helping us to walk in highest and best. You're helping us to walk out your word. So Father, I pray that this word today would stick in our spirit and we would remember it. We would be able to recall these scriptures to our memory. And that we would watch over our words so that our words are beautiful gifts to ourselves and to others. Use us to encourage others with our words. So Father, I thank you that we commit to watching over our thought life, to watching over our words, and we ask the Holy Spirit to help us in these areas. Help us and remind us, put a check on our mouth when we start to speak something that shouldn't be just spoken that way and we would deal with it properly. Turn it into prayer. And so we thank you for this now. We thank you for helping us. With you, all things are possible. I declare that we are mature men and women of God. I declare that we are well able to do this. I declare that our households are going to carry a stronger presence of the Holy Spirit. I declare that our households are going to have more worship and more love and more peace and more joy. I declare that our words are going to come out of our mouth and they're going to be beautiful gifts to encourage others. I thank you for it, Father. 
thank you for watching over the words of our mouth and helping us to do this. Thank you for it. We submit this to you now to do this work in us and through us. And we thank you for being our reminder that the Holy Spirit on the inside will quicken this to us, will remind us of these scriptures. And we thank you now for your help. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.